if you look at Earth from above, you will see how thin the atmosphere is. And that thin atmosphere cannot hold on forever. One quarter of Earth is land. And the sea level is rising, which means the amount of land that we have is decreasing. And most of the lands are turning into deserts. The weather is getting warmer and warmer, and the atmosphere is getting dirtier due to greenhouse, greenhouse gases. And with all of this, the human population is increasing. So if it is going to continue like this, the Earth cannot hold us anymore. So what should we do? We have to change our way of living. We have to find a solution for this. According to what Stephen Hawking said, that humanity has less than 200 years to find a new place to live on, and he is right. And according to our abilities and methods that we can improve them and develop them to be used in the near future, there are actually two places scientists believe humans can use them for living. And they are completely different. The first place is the oceans. We live only in one quarter of Earth, so now it is time to use the other three quarter of Earth, which is the oceans. Okay, how can we live on the oceans or in any other water world? We can actually if we try. Like there are some people who have already adapted to life on the oceans so long ago. And here are some examples of them. Here is the Bajaulaut, build their village in the middle of the sea. And they live almost their entire life there. So as you can see, with only some pieces of food, they have built their abodes there. And most of the families here has no money. They say the oceans provide us everything we need. And to Give another example of Cat Ba Island from Vietnam. Those people are more modern people. They have even schools and a hospital here. And most of the people here have never stepped on the land. So if you look at them with their abilities and with only traditional methods, without any technology, they live there. So what can we do with our high and modern technology? Let's come to have a look of what we could do or what we have done. We have built some oil production stations on oceans that thousands of people work there or live there. And also, we have built highway bridges on oceans. And we use some ways of farming called aquaculture or aquaforming, it is a way of farming and breeding seafood in a pen, sy pen system like this. It contains fish, plants, anything that can grow in water. And it also can provide a large quantity of seafood to the global and it makes less use of wild fish. Like more than a half of seafood in the United States is formed with this way. And the oceans are providing us a special type of renewable energy called ocean waves energy. It is a way of converting ocean waves to electrical power with different methods and different stations. And not only this, we can even build solar and wind power stations on oceans. So if we try to develop these methods of constructing and building, I believe we can even go on to build cities on oceans that can be refuges for many people. Now let's come to talk about the second place, which is the outer space planets and mostly its planet Mars. The first thing we should know is how we can reach Mars. The most practical way to do that is called 
cycling pathway to Mars, which it has been suggested by Dr. Buzz Aldrin. He was the one who went to the moon with Neil Armstrong. So now he has another dream of sending humans to Mars. And here is how it works. Earth and Mars are orbiting the sun just like this. So as you can see, there is a specific range that Earth and Mars are in the closest position to each other. So only at this range, we can go to Mars or return back from Mars. So according to Aldrin's cycling way, we will send a spacecraft named Cycler, the black one. It will travel between Earth and Mars perpetually forever using gravitational assist. And it will take six months until we can reach Mars with this way. And the time that it takes for Earth and Mars to return back to the same orientation from which they started is 18 months. So as you go to Mars, you have to stay there for 18 months until you can come back home again. And also, another six months for returning back, that means 30 months journey far away from home. In this way, we can send both humans and cargoes to Mars. So as we know, in 2030s, we will send the first human's crew to Mars with this way. Here is how we can reach Mars. Now, what we will do on Mars. When we land on Mars, we will explore it and try to find any signs of life on it, and also investigate the way we can establish a human settlement there. Because Mars has many resources to support life for humans. Like we can generate rocket fuel and supply breathable air from Martian atmospheric gases. And also we can use mineral supplies of Mars for construct constructing purposes. And eventually, there will be renewable energy to use, like geothermal and solar and wind energy. These resources would allow us to lower the, lower the amount of materials and equipment that must be taken from Earth, which will make it cheaper and easier for us. So when 18 months passed and the first crew started to return back, another crew will arrive at the same time to continue Mars exploration. And this will happen continuously until we can establish the first permanent human settlement on Mars. Now, if we come to think about these two places, like living on Mars or in oceans, if you think about it, they can only provide life to so few amount of people compared to our huge population. And those people who will live there, they will always need life support from Earth. So without the Earth, life will be temporary there. And we cannot just depend on artificial life support there for a long time, because we always need life support from natural sources of Earth, which are, we are losing them. Any place, any area, any life form of Earth we are losing has effects on us. To give an example, one of the scenarios is losing the Arctic ice. We all recognize the Arctic as huge mountains of ice. But their role in the movement of the oceans and also redistributing global heat is important for life. Let me explain. In the Arctic, the water gets cooler. As it gets cooler, it's heavier than before, so it sinks below. It is replaced by a new warm water, which will cool down with the same process, and it will push the water with, with its weight. So this cycling process, it makes the ocean's water to move around the world, and also to transfer and redistribute heat with it. But as we noticed, the Arctic ice is melting due to rising temperatures. And if this is going to continue, the Arctic ice will vanish. And if that happens, the ocean will stop moving and the water will rot. That means all the sea creatures cannot breathe in it anymore. 
and they will die. And if the temperature got high enough to melt the Arctic ices, at that time, no one on Earth can resist it anymore, not even we humans. And not only this, there are forests, there are jungles, there are rivers, there are grasslands, a clean atmosphere that you are losing them also. If we lose these resources of life support, at that time, not oceans, not Mars can provide us life. So, as it seems, the solution for humanity is to save Earth first and to maintain it livable. To do that, we have to depend on renewable energy more and to take care of the Earth nature more and try to relive or to revive those areas that have been dirt or turned into deserts. Like why would have only 200 years left? If we try, if we care, we can maintain the earth forever. Why, when a country gets a problem, all their supreme leaders will do their best to solve it? Or if one of your family member got sick, immediately you will go to take him to the doctor. But who will take care of earth if it got sick? And the cause of its sickness is us. And those who can save it are also us. So the choice is ours, to save it or not. If we could save it, at that time, we can build any other place as a secondary home for humans. And thank you.